remove this stupid pre-combustion seal. It's not being friendly whatsoever. Like, how seized in can you possibly be? So supposedly these little gaskets in there, you're supposed to be able to just pull them out with this nice little pick. Yeah, freaking right. Because I've got paint can opener bent to fit inside. I'm using the top of what normally holds down the injector and the nuts on it to pull straight up on that pin and it doesn't even come close. In fact, it is, instead of coming out, it's actually bending the paint stick. I've got an Allen key here stopping it from slipping out, but it's actually bending this thing that I've bent back straight. That's how much force is required to take this out. And I still don't even have it out yet. So it's going to require a lot more force than that. I'm trying to get these combustion chambers out. I can't pick the heat shield out from the back side. So I'm trying to tap it out from the inside. Not sure how well it's going to work. Oh, it's moving. Woo! Progress. Thank you, Free Range Sailing. I've looked up so many different ways of doing this, and I remember seeing him try this on his boat. I was not very tempted to smash things with a hammer, but if this is the only way we're going to get it out, at least I'll get it out. I'll deal with whatever parts happen to break, but I don't think I'm going to break anything by the looks of it. <laughs> So I've gotten them both pushed in into their seats a little bit, but just to give you an idea how much less force this one takes, I can just kind of gently tap that one and it goes all the way out. And also that one that we're having so much trouble, that's the one that we have, uh, that the piston was cracked. It seems like uh, Yanmar 2 GMs might not have all the exact same parts because we only found one, two, three, four, five pieces in our injector injector chambers. There's but supposed to be one more on top of this or underneath this, depending on which part this is. Two more potentially. Anyway, um, you can see this is the one that was stuck in there. I've already cleaned this up quite a bit, but you can see how much carbon was in around that. No wonder it was so stuck in there. And so yeah, this was the part that you were supposed to be able to use a little pick and just get it in underneath and just pull it gently. right out gently. It specifically said gently. And the amount of force I had to put on it was ridiculous. Having fun yet? <laughs> Today is a beautiful, gloomy, rainy day and we're just inside cleaning more of the engine. We've got to add quite a few seals and chambers to our injectors. So we're just cleaning them up and removing all the carbon buildup. We have uh, some semi-clean parts right here. Still got to clean up a little bit more of the combustion chamber here. There's still some carbon. We're trying to get rid of as much carbon as possible. And you can see the heat shield here. This one's pretty clean on that side, but there's still a bit of carbon to be cleaned up around the edges gotten the inside pretty much as clean as it's going to get and this one actually is going to be replaced we bought it we're going to order a new one because trying to remove it would you just focus trying to remove <laughs> it it uh we sort of damaged the inner ring just a little bit there's a little mix in it so we'll save this as a spare or something in a pinch but um so we have no issues we're gonna swap it out what are we using to clean the carbon off oh yeah i'm just using some uh, diesel and one of these little um i think it's like thousand grit or 800 grit just a little like scrubby from yeah, 3m Sc scotch bright 3m yeah. scrub pads and they seem to be so doing the gently trick. kind of scrubbing it's a pretty slow process yeah but I'd rather, all of this was black initially yeah. i'd rather take off a little bit at a time and not damage the parts that we're we're working so with. watch stuff, drink coffee and scrub away. <laughs> so currently just cleaning out these areas where the 
injectors go and the pre-combustion chambers used to be. Just making sure there's a nice smooth area. And somebody, one of the technicians where we bought our parts from suggested putting a little bit of anti-seize around the pre-combustion chambers that go inside. I've already got those all cleaned up, but um, just to make it easier to pull them out in the future, I think I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize. Not that I wanna do this anytime soon. As you can see, I got the pre-combustion chamber cleaned up real nice, almost like new, other than a bit of carbon on the very tip there, but she's pretty shiny along the sides where it's going to be seating inside the little chamber. So I've spent all afternoon just scrubbing away the bottom of the injectors, and I don't know if you can see, but... Found a little crack on the outside of the injector. That's like miniature, super, super small, so I think we're going to put it apart and see what's in see if we can find the crack from the inside anyways because we're just we're starting to run out of time <laughs> we can't really wait for more parts because it's hurricane season has um, kind of started i mean we haven't had too many big storms here yet which is good but starting to be a little bit nerve-wracking being stuck without an engine So it's definitely not most likely the proper way to do this, but I'm trying to get this little thing out. So I'm using a socket and I'm giving it a gentle tap. And it's slowly making its way out. I got it out, as you can see. It's quite a bit of carbon on the outside of that. And the inside of this is just caked with the stuff as well. So at least now we can investigate this crack a little further and see if it's damaged the inside at all. And we have a bunch of Yanmar parts, all seals and gaskets and rings for our two combustion chambers. We have the proper order of everything according to our diagrams here. I became the part uh, shopping person. So at the very top we have the bottom ring then we have the combustion, the pre-combustion chamber. Then another ring in between the heat shield. Then the heat shield has a few of these rings on top of it. Insulators and protectors. And then we have the injector that goes on top of that. So on the heat shield, sorry, the heat shield and the pre pre-combustion chamber, I'm going to put just a little bit of anti-seize to make it easier to come out in the future. There's a little notch on the side of the, on the left side here of the injector uh, or the pre-combustion chamber and that has to line up with the little notch on the side of the pre-combustion chamber here. So you just want to make sure that that goes in the right spot. This is the only one gasket we found when we removed our chambers. So either the three of them fused up because there's supposed to be all these three on top of the rear chamber. So it already wipes off the excess um, anti-seize to make sure I don't make a mess of this thing. I'm just using this little pick to make it a little easier to get them in place. Seems to be working pretty good. Hmm. Why not? And the cover. 
So the insulator, the second insulator doesn't seem to sit just right, so I'm not sure about that. Since the little gasket there keeps sliding down, because if you look over here, it's supposed to go on top. Come on now. It's supposed to go on top there, but because there's room around it, it keeps sliding down and overlapping. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the block, or sorry, the, the head. head pointed upward. So I'm just gonna get it into the right position. And we're gonna put the injector down on top of it. Which we've left both every number of injector and chamber to make sure we were putting everything back in the same hole it was. Beautiful. So the dimples go downward, the flat side up. Just slap this guy on and it should put pressure down to hold everything in place. I didn't really want to put the injectors on right away because they might get in my way when I put the head on, but since those things aren't staying in the right spot... You know what, actually, I'm just gonna... I can always move those things once the head is on. This way I don't accidentally, while I'm moving things around, I won't accidentally end up with the these little gaskets moving around on me while I'm moving the head around. So we'll leave this till the end and I'll just have to push the gasket up once the head's on. Mm -hmm. 